Welcome to the Industry Angel Podcast. We hear from the best business minds across the globe. Entrepreneurs, social influencers, marketing mavens, and sales rock stars. We've got them all. Here comes your weekly dose of inspiration with your host, Ian Farah. Welcome to episode 60 of the Industry Angel. Now, you know how much I enjoy your emails and tweets. And I love it when you ask for topics and guests because this is your show. I want to provide as much value as I can on your commute to work, your walk along the beach, your run on the hills. So you asked me for more about presentations and I have just the man for the job. I suggest you pick up a pad and paper and strap yourself in because there's value bombs galore here. Today we have a gentleman who transforms businesses and brands. He's a mentor and a coach to some of the world's leading speakers, coaches, business owners and thought leaders. Welcome to the industry angel, Dustin Matthews. Hey, hey, thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Good to have you with us, Dustin. So we're going to talk all about your new book. Uh, Shall I throw it in now? No BS Guide to Powerful Presentations, How to Sell Anything with Webinars and Online Media, Speeches and Seminars. Well, you know, I got to I got to first start off. I co-wrote it with uh, my mentor uh, Dan Kennedy, and my little joke is uh, he's a professionally paid copywriter, and so uh, he likes a really long title because I think he gets paid by the word. So that's my little inside joke on why the title's so long. (laughs) <laughs> some have the brains, some have the looks, eh, Dustin? <laughs> that's a, that's exactly right. That's why I teamed up with him. Is uh, he's got some <laughs> major insights. I got some insights, and uh, yeah, just this is a fun project. <laughs> well, listen, no pressure, but I'm expecting value bombs galore out of this today, okay? Because that, let's do that it. Is, that is some title. So, listen, before you jump into that, why don't you give us a lowdown on your background so we can kind of understand the mind behind the book? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I came out of university actually afraid to speak and give presentations and actually found a loophole. Uh, got started in the business world and uh, was forced to actually give them and uh, had a big revelation along the way. And so uh, I worked with the company in the very beginning. Uh, we took it to the Inc. 500, then decided to go off, jump the ship because I was working for that company and uh, go do it myself. And so uh, I've been doing that for the last, gosh, nine years now, uh, starting businesses. Um, using webinars and speaking and, um, you know, whatever, whatever forms now podcasting to go out and get my message out there uh, to really make a difference in people's lives. And so uh, now I run a company called Speaking Empire that trains folks from all parts of the world and all different niches and genres, how to get out there and, and deliver a message. So it sounds like you paid your dues to be able to, to write the book then, yeah? I, I like to think so. I mean, I think what people will find interesting was, uh, you know, sometimes when you see a speaker or someone, you know, in the spotlight, you think, oh, wow, you know, like they were born that way. And uh, I want my introvert friends and my friends on the sideline to understand, listen, you know, I was at university and had to take public speaking in order to graduate and became so motivated not to take this class that I started asking people like, how do I get out of this class? What's the what's the loophole? And eventually I found one. And so uh, the true story is I I had taken a class earlier uh, at school and it was called Model United Nations, which I was speaking in front of 100 people, 100 other countries. And uh, the funny thing was, is the, re- the whole reason why I was taking that class was I was chasing a girl. Now, Ian, it didn't work out with the girl, <laughs> yeah. but I, I was able to get the teacher to write me a note and I got out of it. And so, uh, you know, my goal here today and just in life in general is, uh, you know, I was initially afraid to, to speak and deliver a message and be in the spotlight. And if I inspire just one person listening in, it's a win for me because uh, I think we all have something powerful to share. And uh, I know sometimes fear stops us or other things stop us and so you know now's the time that, that's a great backstory because what what i tend to find is that you have some very good speakers okay so they haven't had that issue that worry that anxiety about public speaking they're really good at that but they can't back it up with the other bits so it's a bit like the the 22 year old life coach scenario great speaker mm-hmm. but they've got no substance so i'm guessing you've got the substance but you didn't have the kind of the confidence at the time and that's why this book's come out yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I hadn't thought about it, but yeah, I've been doing this for about 13 years now. Yeah, 2017. So yeah, 13 years. And um, I've been using it in some form or fashion, speaking and uh, giving presentations specifically. Uh, oftentimes I was behind the scenes. I was the introverted guy. I was more your, you know, ops sort of uh, marketing person behind the scenes and then uh, was forced to do it. And so now I've been marrying uh, really marketing and speaking, which is to me the same thing. It's just a message that needs to be delivered. So when you're talking about uh, marketing and speaking side, are, are we saying that this book is targeted at sales and marketing teams who are trying to sell a value proposition to a, a prospect? I would say that it is definitely right up their alley, but you know, I want to take a step back in and say, you know, everything in life is a presentation. So whether you consider yourself in fulfillment, whether you're a friend, you know, of mine that's in corporate, uh, you know, and you've got to give, you know, presentations to the boardroom, it's all about influence. And I should couple in and say, listen, it's all about value. And so every person is going to have a a different scenario. Like if you're a boardroom, you've got to provide value, you've got to influence in a different way than maybe someone that's a business coach that's going to get on a podcast or a webinar or Facebook Live. And so what this book is about is really like, what is the structure of influential communication? And, and in it, we talk about the five parts. And Ian, I'm happy to, to drop some value, like you said, um, getting into the five parts of a persuasive presentation uh, that will apply to anybody. So whether you're boardroom, whether you're writing copy, a video sales letter, a podcaster, uh, at the end of the day, we all have a message. We all need to motivate people to take an action. And uh, that's our that's our goal uh, to, to create sales or to create results in life. Well, I'd love that. So basically what you're saying is that it's to sell anything. So it could be an idea, a practice, an operation. It doesn't have to be an actual product or a service, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Like uh, to give people some idea, to give folks idea here, like, you know, everything, like whenever you present, and, and again, I, I want to get real loose with that word present because some people say, oh, well, I'm not a speaker. Or, oh, I don't give presentations. And, you know, if you're an online marketer or a business coach, you do it one-to-one or you may write a sales, uh, you know, email. Uh, and so you need to put together that message that gets people to act. And so what does act look like? And so action can be, you know, my, my folks in the financial space, they like to set up appointments because maybe they have a complex sale or they they need some education or they want to be diagnostic. Some people like in charities, you know, they're asking for money. So they're asking for people to to give money to donate to a cause. Obviously, if you're a coach or entrepreneur, you want people to buy your products and services. And then finally, I get that some people speak or give presentations in, in environments where you can't be so forward. And so get people to subscribe to your Facebook page or opt into your list. And so those are the different actions that you would want uh, people to take. And there's so many other ones, but those are the big ones. And so every message you should, you deliver should persuade your audience to at least do something because without action in life, nothing happens. Brilliant. So basically what we're saying is that this book is for anyone. <laughs> well, I like to say, I mean, it's business minded. Uh, so for those of you that are, uh, you know, I don't want to be all things, all people and overpromise here. But uh, for those of you that want to get in and start up a business, I've started uh, both businesses on backs of presentations, on backs of influential communication. Um, for those of you in business, obviously, this is great. And so I would say this is more a business book. But if you want to be, if you want to test the waters, if you're you know, not in business or sales, uh, for sure, it will have some application to you. But uh, if you're in business, this, this book will rock your world. So you mentioned five, five platforms, five structures in this. Was that right? Yeah, that's right. Got the good memory there. So there's, uh, f- here's the thing, Ian, there's five things to a presentation and everybody does these, whether they know it or not. The challenge is most people don't know. And so as they say, knowledge is power. So I'll give the first, uh, I'll give the five real quick and then we'll unpack them if we've got some time. We got time. So let me give the first five. So Number one is your intro. Number two is your story. Number three is your offer. Now, real quick, offer doesn't mean you're going to come out of the gate and start selling. I'm going to explain that in just a second. Number four is your body. That's where the meat your content is, the value you provide. And and don't get me wrong, values all the way throughout the presentation, but most people say, oh, that's where I teach. And then five is your close. And again, a close doesn't have to be a sale. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, give me money. It can be, it can be a many different things. So real quick on the structure. Not too quick mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. You, in I love it. Well, you call me out. Like if you think I'm going too quick, I want cool. my goal here is to deliver massive value. So let's talk about the intro. So 
I'll just use a case study. Like, I'll use us. So, Ian, you introduced me on this podcast. Now, it would be a little weird if you you didn't introduce me because that's that's sort of the format of an interview, like the person introduces. But when people speak or go on, on a podcast or let's say you have a retail store, if you want to leverage influence and persuasion, you should consider always having somebody introduce you. So if you look at society, whether you like it or not, the royalty, the president of the United States, athletes and celebrities, they are all properly introduced. So if you go to your favorite, you know, if you go to a football game or you go to a soccer match, right, like the players are introduced before the match begins. They're properly introduced. The announcer comes on. If you go, uh, if you see the president or you see the queen of England, right, like she, she doesn't just come out like out of the out of the castle or out of wherever. She is properly introduced. And so if you look at these people in society, these are influential characters. They're often paid the most. And so if you want to model what works out there, consider having a person introduce you, and that can be a client. It can be the person that the people have rapport with, like in the boardroom, it could be the person that called the meeting, or um, it can be an intro video. It's one of my favorite things to do because, Ian, I'll I'll share this. I'm not a braggadocious guy. I'm not going to sit here and say I won this award or I've done this or I've done that. However, I will let other people like you brag about it or a video brag about it because credibility and authority is important to an audience. Does that make sense, Ian? It certainly does, yeah. So you're talking about a video that might sit on a website? Yeah, so uh, if you are going to do a webinar, let's say, or let's say you're speaking in front of a stage or even Facebook Live, you can do this now. I would have a two-minute, call it a introduction reel, and that's where there's a nice voiceover, and it says, you know, in a moment, you're going to meet a very special person who's done this, this, and this. He's written this book, and he's been in this media. And so the goal of the introduction is really to make yourself a rock star because it's important to the audience. The audience needs to be excited about who you are as a character before they're even going to listen to you. They want to know that the source is valuable and pertinent to them. Excellent stuff. And who writes that bio then? Dustin, is that something you write and then you ask them to kind of speak for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So whenever I go onto podcasts or whenever I go onto stage, I have a one page document that I give to people and actually have variations of it because I know some people just don't want to read, you know, a script. Uh, some people need that script though, um, but some people like bullet points. And so I script it out. I think of everything as choreography, which is uh, definitely a writer downer if you are taking notes. Um, but I think about The presentation absolutely matters, and we'll get through the five steps here in just a second, but there are things that you can do before you even get to a presentation, and obviously there are things you can do afterwards. We've all heard the fortunes in the follow-up, but ahead of time, you know, you can send out videos, you can build rapport, you can give someone a copy of your book even before they actually meet you, and so in a way, you have influenced them favorably towards your cause. And so I think of everything as choreography. And so in the intro video or in the intro, I write that stuff out. I never expect them to do it because they're busy, right? They're running their own business. They're running their event. And so it's your job to show up with the tools. Sure. Did you say there was two parts of the intro? Uh, generally, I didn't say that, but what spawns in my head, because let's, let's go deep here, is whenever I have someone introduce me, I like to have the person that they know. So obviously you introduced me, but yet you sort of had to do that. But at an event, sometimes if I'm in a breakout room or if I'm you know not on the main stage or even if I am on the main stage, an MC might introduce me. Instead, if they are all there to see a a certain person, a celebrity or the guru that organized the event, I would ask that person to come out because they all have affinity with that person. And so I would say, hey, it would mean a lot to me and my family if you would come out and just introduce me and say a few words. Now, the second part of that introduction is I actually would tell them not just to introduce me, but I would say, say some kind words and then let's play my intro video right after there. And so basically... I've got the person that they love and they've signed up for the conference, you know, there for introducing me. And then I have a video as well um, to introduce me. So those would be the two parts of a most powerful introduction. Brilliant stuff. Should I head over to story? Yes, absolutely. So obviously there's a, there's a ton to unpack here uh, just in the intro. That's one of my biggest and favorite ones. And so let's get to story. So story In every presentation, you ought to consider telling a transformative story. Now, if you look at Hollywood and your favorite movie, there's always some figure that goes on a journey. Life is tough, and then life becomes good again. And and so it's in that journey that 
you learn things. It's in that journey that you become a better person. So in that same way, you want to tell your story, your journey, and some sort of transformation that is linked to your product. So as an example, you could say, listen, you know, I was fumbling around with, you know, this internet stuff and I spent a lot of money and I was, you know, on my last dollar and, you know, it was in this kind of dark place that I discovered there were three simple things that I needed to do in order to make money and they were this, this, and this. And so in my system, I, you know, I have created this formula based on these three principles. So now I've told my story, just, I did that rather quickly, but I told my story and I linked it to something that I discovered was a three-step process. And so, Ian, usually when I tell people this, they're like, well, Dustin, you know, I, I'm kind of, I speak to professionals, you know, I, you know, I can't really brag about me. And I, I say, I get it. So if you're a more corporate or more of association world, if that's where you're showing up to speak or do a Facebook Live or a webinar, you want to tell the story of your company or the department and how you discovered that in the marketplace there was something that was wrong and then you created this software, you created this solution. And so the important thing to keep in mind is you've got to tell some sort of story of transformation. It's just baked into us from the beginning of time that we love to see transformation and it helps us connect with the audience. Excellent. Can I just drill that process bit? So you've got the kind of conclusion. This is what you did. This is how it happened. What was that yep. process bit that you mentioned? So you mentioned like a kind of three-step process. Do you always try and break it down into steps so the audience can understand? Absolutely. Well, yes. I'm going to talk about steps specifically a little bit later on. The key point here, and I'm glad you're asking this because we definitely need to spend time. A lot of people will just tell a story, but they don't yeah. link it to their product. So obviously you're in front of that audience, whether it's one-to-one -one in a retail store, you're on a webinar or Facebook Live. And so you're in front of that audience. You tell a story and that's good, but you've got to link it to the product that you're selling. And so it can be discovering steps, which we'll discuss in just a second. It can be, you know, it was down in the pits when I created this product and or I created the foundations for this product that I'm going to offer you. Or, you know, if you take a, a physical product, you know, it was I created this widget because nothing else existed. And, you know, I kept hitting my toe on, on the, you know, the baseboards in, in my in my house. <laughs> and so now, you know, I said I was frustrated. I was linked, uh, you know, and I went to work and I started to create this product. And so it's important. Tell your story of transformation, but make sure that you incorporate your product, that you either created it or you got inspired by the idea in that moment. And so now that links you to your product or service. Brilliant. Thanks for going back over that one. So let's move on to offer. Yeah. Yeah. So this, Ian, this is a big one. So okay. offer is not necessarily like, let's sell our product, you know, be so forward. This is all about making sure the audience realizes there's a pain that they have a pain or there's a challenge in the marketplace. And the best way to do this are with statistics. So going out and doing some research about what's really happening in the marketplace or that, you know, 67% of Americans or 67% of folks are, you know, afflicted by this debilitating disease, right? And so, wow, you know, it's a lot more than I thought. And then the offer is the solution. And so your solution can be for sure your product, but it ought to be your steps, your philosophy, your methodology. And so your job is to make the audience aware that, yeah, there really is a challenge out there. There really is some pain. And again, statistics and, and media mentions, so newspaper or online or something that they will believe in or something that they know is reputable. And then your job is to alleviate that pain, that problem and say, listen, friends, don't worry because I'm about to t share with you my methodology, my process, my discovery here. And that takes us into the body. Brilliant. Where you mentioned this is all about the value, yeah? Absolutely. So in the body, here's what I want you to do. So I've obviously, I've given five steps, right? So there are five steps to a powerful presentation. So in the same way I'm sharing that with you, you want to consider doing the same thing because people love processes. People love systems. People love organized information. They don't like erratic stuff. They want to get a successful action. So let's, let's take this as an example. Let's say I was selling weight loss. And my steps were, you know, drink more water. Number two, you know, walk an extra five minutes outside. Number three, look at the fork twice before you, you stick it in your mouth, right? And four and five, right? So let's say those are the steps. Now, odds are, if you've 
done diets or, you know, dabbled in this, you've probably heard one or two of these or maybe even all five of these before these steps, right? So how do you make yourself different? And so what I would tell people to do is call it something, meaning call it the, you know, instant weight loss formula. Now, for some of you, you may say, well, Dustin, that's a little hypey. And I say, okay, great. So if your market is sensitive, then maybe you call it the Matthews method for weight loss. And so the big thing here is that you want to create steps to package your value. You don't want to just say, you know, here's 17 things you can do. You want to give people a system, a way that you help them be successful or a way that the department can make a change uh, or increase results. And then ideally, if you can, you want to name it something. And I'm always a fan of trademarking it. Because when you see a little TM or a copyright or, you know, a registered trademark behind it, doesn't it look more substantial to you, Ian? It does indeed, but it uh, obviously comes at a cost. Absolutely, absolutely does, and, and that's a good. That's a very good point. I say, if you want to make yourself different in the marketplace, then you should consider doing that because you know no one can ever take away the Matthews methods. Like if I go and I trademark it, no one can say, "Well, I've got the Matthew method too," or the instant weight loss formula. And so, if you're going to hang your hat on this product, if you're going to sell a lot of this, then yeah, you may want to consider doing it because it'll give you instant differentiation, your uh, unique selling proposition. But if it's maybe like a one-off, then I agree. Then I don't think you have to go and trade market. But when you do this, it looks more powerful, looks more believable, and people love the systems. Now, I want to plus it. You ready for this, Ian? Come on, then. All right, all right, here we go. Because you, you you challenged me, and I, I'm feeling it. So, uh, which which makes for a good interview. So, um, in between each step, right? So, if I tell you drink more water, you may have tried that back in the '90s, right? Like you may have you know been on the water diet or whatever, right? And you're sitting there in a room or on a Facebook Live, and your arms are crossed, meaning you're not receptive to this information. And I think about this now, Ian, because I've got two young boys. Uh, one is eight weeks old right now, so uh, I'm uh, getting less sleep than before. Uh, but it's it's one heck of a ride. Um, but my three year old Dexter, I tell him to do something, and now he's at that age where he's like, you know, no. <laughs> and so I think about that, like in every audience. Or or even when I sit across from somebody and I say, listen, you know, I've got five steps to success. Number one is drink more water. You know, they can sit there and say, you know, back in the 90s, I tried that thing and I actually gained a lot more weight because I drank so much water. And so now you have resistance and that 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 impedes the sale, right? Or impedes you from influencing that person. So what I always say is tell a case study or testimonial in between each step. So it would be something like drink more water. And then I would say, well, I want to talk to you about Cindy. And you know what Cindy did was she was a little skeptical and uh, she had tried some other diets in the past. And when I told her to drink more water, I just challenged her to do it for seven days. That's it, seven days. And so she actually drank her water and the first day was a little rough. And then the second day she started drinking eight ounces or 16 ounces or whatever. And then by the seventh day, she dropped three and a half pounds. And so now when I tell you that, you're like, well, okay, all right, maybe I need to investigate this. And so then when I say step two and then tell you a story, a case study or a testimonial, and then I tell step three, it all stacks on each other and it furthers the sale, it furthers the message. And so you do yourself a great favor by coming up with five or three or seven steps and then figuring out stories of success in your marketplace or people that you've personally worked with uh, that have gotten results. I think that's an excellent tip. So thinking about thinking about that body it's, it, that, that's the big bit okay Dustin so you every time you're putting a step out there you, you're backing it up with a little bit of a case study yep. where is that best suited is that uh what, what we're thinking here powerpoint presentation speaking in public everywhere so even everywhere. if i'm even yeah. if i'm on a podcast right so i'm telling you you know the, the weight loss formula like so i'm telling you hey you know the, the five steps of success are this one is this and then number two is or, or the second thing i would tell you is the story of cindy right and so for me in this particular case i'm shortcutting some of the testimonials here so that i can deliver the goods and give you value and the content but you can do this anywhere you can do this in an email you give people a construct you know three steps to writing powerful subject lines and then give them a little case study in between each one, or if you're on a podcast or you're publicly speaking, or yes, on a PowerPoint or keynote. Yeah, no, that's fine. I just thought I'd ask because I'm just mindful of this being quite long, you know, if mm -hmm. you're given a case study between each different point. So, 
Yeah, so it depend, that's all where this gets situational. In the book, we talk about that. Obviously, if you speak on a stage, generally you get you know 60 minutes, sometimes 90 minutes, and so you okay. can go longer with the stories. And remember, stories sell, and stories provide massive value. And I wouldn't say just any stories, but case stories, case studies. And so obviously, if you're in an email, you don't have a lot of time to you know tell the full story of Cindy. You may just say, you know, here's here's a, an example of one of my clients. Her name is Cindy. Uh, she's from Wales, and she drank drank water for seven days and she dropped three pounds. And so I shortcut that. I would much rather prefer telling you her whole story because she's more believable. And there may be other females in the audience listening in that resonate with her because they find out that she's a nurse or that she's from Wales or she's from, you know, wherever. And so obviously if you're short on time, you got to sacrifice that, but you still need to tell case studies somehow, some fashion. Yeah, it's it's getting that emotional tie as well, isn't it? And maybe just trying to have some, uh, I don't know, just sort of alliance with, with the crowd as well, isn't it? So, okay, I'm glad I asked that question because you got a great answer for that. So <laughs> <laughs> um, should we go on to close? Yes, let's do it. So, you know, uh, Ian, let me ask you this question. I love to have fun with this. Have you ever been to an event or maybe watched a webinar or Facebook Live where someone was selling and like they were pretty happy, happy happy-go-lucky, or they were one way in the beginning of the presentation and then, you know, an offer came out at the end and they were maybe different, maybe angry, maybe they spoke faster. Uh, Have you ever noticed that? Uh, Yeah, there's kind of a court of action at the end, isn't it, where they (laughs) they, they wanted to do something here? So a couple things. And I get it. Like I was this person too. I didn't know how to do it. It's like, I want to provide massive value, but like, I don't want to feel like, you know, I'm selling them the whole time. Like, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. And no one, no one wants to be that guy or gal. So, so two things. So the close, number one is the real easy transition to the close is you simply ask the question. So on a podcast, you know, you would say, you know, would it be okay with you if I shared with you my system? Or on a Facebook Live is, you know, how many of you would be interested to see the same system that Cindy used or the same methodology? Would that be okay with you? And so you simply ask a question. And so if you've done everything I've, I've told you leading up to this point, you can't, you can't mess it all up, but you, you've got to do some things right before you get to this point. And you get yeses throughout. It's real natural and it's real easy to have the audience say yes. Now, the other big thing, so, so number one, just to recap, is make sure to ask for permission to sell. So say, listen, how many of you would like to see the same system that can help you get results or how many of you want to get to the next level? The other thing is you shouldn't wait to the very end uh, to ask that question right there. You should do questions throughout. So get yeses throughout. So you notice I've engaged with you, Ian. I've asked you, does that make sense? You said yes. You know, we've, we've had some dialogue here just on a podcast, but also checking in with the audience audience. And so the other thing that I want to pepper in here is that when you give a presentation, you ought to let them know right in the beginning that you're there to sell them something. And whether you're there to sell them an idea or opting into your list or or a book. And so at the very beginning of this, Ian, you did it for me. You said, we're going to talk about your book. And so right away, they weren't waiting the whole time building this pressure between me and the audience and you about, okay, is he going to offer something? Is he going to offer something? You let it, you let all the pressure out right away. And so I tell people that same way. Like if you ever feel that, just let people know. And the way I do this is I say, listen, I'm going to give you some massive value here today that you can take and walk away with. And at the very end, I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, for some of you to go to the next level with me. Would that be okay with you? And so the audience says, sure. And so again, what you want to do is before you get into close, make sure you do these things so that it's a whole lot easier. Are you talking about rhetorical questions there? Or are you actually looking from for physical nods from the audience when you ask them a question? Yeah, I love it. And th- this makes it fun because we're talking about all different media. So if I'm in a room, yeah, I want hand raises. I want people to say <laughs> yes. I want people to write down because that's a sign of engagement, right? So in a room, yeah. we can see it. Now on a podcast, that's really tough. And so you, you have to just visualize that they're there. You have to ask questions. I have to play off of you, Ian. On a Facebook Live or a webinar, I love these ones, you can tell people to go to the chat box. So if you enjoyed that, just say yes and type it in Facebook Live or as a comment. That way I know you guys are there and you understood what I just shared with you. Now on a podcast, I can't, I can't do that because I'm not getting the feedback live time, but I can play off of you and I can ask the question. So every media has a different sort of uh, hook, but you just want to make sure you're engaging. And uh, as my partner Dave uh, in business says, and you're not vomiting on the audience because a lot of people do that. And so you want to make it fun and exciting for them.
I think the vomiting bit is because that's why people um, speak quickly because it's uncomfortable to do that. It's yeah. boring for them. They do it every <laughs> time they speak. So sometimes they might add lib, they might get a bit of feedback from the audience and go off on a tangent, but they know that that end bit is always the same. So they yeah. kind of rush through it, don't you? They don't, they? and uh, it's uncomfortable for them sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I just say relieve the pressure. Let people know that you're you're there to offer something. So then that way you're not second guessing yourself, or you're not in your head in your in your talk or towards the end. So you know, there's no pressure on you. And then just remember to be of service. So remember, you're there for a reason. Uh, they're there for a reason as well. So they want to hear what you have to say. Some of them, not all of them, unless it's really a qualified room. Not all of them want your thing and aren't going to move forward. And that's fine. Like I want people to bring in the mindset of the long game. And so if you don't get a customer there, you don't get them to take the action you want, that's okay. Deliver massive value because some of them are going to go out and try these ideas and they're going to get a result and they're going to be like, whoa, this is magic. I need to go back and, and re-listen to Dustin or I need to go get the book or I need to go you know, investigate further. And so I always think of that way and, and, and just relieve the pressure, relieve the expectation, come with value, um, come structured, come prepared, but come with value and, and you'll win. Yeah, definitely. And you know what it is? Sometimes if it's not for them, it might be for someone they know, so they might refer you on. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just that pressure that builds up. I think it, you know, it really it challenges people. You know, one, they want to look good, which I get. And, and it's not about you. It's about the audience. It's about the value that you're, you're going to deliver. And so just keep that in mind. And that'll get rid of some of the, the anxiety or the jitters that people feel. And uh, that'll serve you big time. Well, at the top of the show, I said, no pressure, Dustin. I want you to drop me some value bombs. You have done it, my man. (laughs) Five big ones. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, I got one more. Do we have time for it, Ian? You said you had five. Are you squeezing one more in? I'm going to, I'm going to squeeze one more and it's part of the close. I I want to make sure I I felt like it was a little light. So in the close, what you want to do is you want to create an irresistible offer. And so I've created, just like I shared with you to create five steps and call it something I've invented. I've created a thing called irresistible offer architecture. And there are nine elements of it. Obviously, we're we're a little short on time. Don't have time to go through all nine of them. Uh, They're in the book, of course. But the two biggest ones I want people to think about are this. I want you to pretend you missed this whole podcast and at the very end, all you hear is the presenter or you hear me or you hear Ian giving the summary of the offer. Or let's say you're on a webinar or let's say you're in a room and you missed the whole presentation and all people hear is your offer. Does it get them excited enough to buy or opt in? And you may say, well, Dustin, that's impossible. That's tough because you need to tell your story. You need to tell case studies. You need to build value. And I get it. You know, I was, I'm a classically trained copywriter, uh, writing words on paper to get people into action. And so one of the things I was taught to write the order form. And if the order form could sell the product itself, everything else was gravy. Everything else was, you know, could stack on top of that. So I think about it when it comes to the offer. So the two big things I want you to think about are what are the big objections your audience has? Sometimes it's time. Sometimes it's money. Will this work for me? And I want you to put components in there that overcome those objections. So if time is a big one, you could go create a time management course or you could go interview a time management expert. And so when you now offer it, you say, listen, I get that you don't have time. That's why I put a time management course in here to make this easier so you can implement quicker. The second thing, and I'm, I'm speaking fast to pack this one in because I'm conscious of the time. Uh, the second thing I want to share with you, uh, overcoming objections was number one. Number two is speaking in benefits. So I see a lot of people out there, especially my info marketer friends uh, and coaches, you know, they want to explain value as, you know, I've got 371 hours of video or I've got a, you know, 534 page workbook. Well, no one really wants that. They want the benefit of that. Think about you in business, right? You want to get instant results. You want more clients, more customers. So when you name things that are part of your program, your offer, I want you to speak in benefits. And all, here's, the, here's the trick. Look at everything in your existing offer right now or one that you will create and just ask yourself, what's the benefit of that? And ask yourself again, what's the benefit of that? And that will take you very far towards naming your product and making it sound irresistible. Totally agree. Um, I think the opposite of speaking in benefits is speaking in features. And I see a lot of that with my clients as well. You know, yeah. it, it does, it can do 150 of these and it can, you know, it, it's got 45 spinny things and it's just like, well, <laughs> what, what do what those things allow you to do? You know, oh, well, I can, I can make 10 components much quicker in two hours rather than overnight. And yeah, it's benefits, isn't it? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people, you know, they miss out because they, you know, they'll say, you know, when you invest today, you're going to get a, you know, 547 page workbook. Well, great. Yeah. Wahoo. You know, but like, what's the benefit of that? Like, am I going to get the rapid sure. results playbook? You know, that sounds in, in, infinitely a lot better. And so uh, just keep that in mind when, when making those offers. Well, thanks for squeezing that last bit in, Dustin. Uh, pure value. So listen, we need to have a bit of a call to action here. Where can we get the book? Absolutely. I've made it easy. And I should tell you this, it's not just a book, right? Irresistible offer, right? If you're paying attention. So it's not just a book. The component of it is a book, but there's also resources uh, that make life easier to implement because I get it. We're in business. It's all about speed. We want to, you know, not just read a book. We want to get into action. So I made it easy. It's at nobspresentations.com. Again, nobspresentations.com. And it's got links to all your favorite books stores. So if you're an Amazon or Barnes and Noble person or an indie bookstore, it, it has them there. And the reason why I'm sending you to that site is on the site, there are resources for you to implement, to execute quicker. So I'm talking videos that I couldn't put inside the book. I'm talking templates. I'm talking examples of people's presentations uh, that you can model. And so make sure to check out nobspresentations.com for the book. And if you happen to be an event person, which I love to do events uh, here at at Speaking Empire. We do an event called the Amplify Experience. And so it's one thing to read a book, but it's another thing to come witness it live and experience it and rub shoulders with promoters and speakers and other business owners. And so if that uh, is your fancy, you like events, check out AmplifyExperience.com. Well, you did that expertly, my friend. Well done. (laughs) So I'll put those I'll put those in the show notes as well. So Dustin, I think all that's left is to thank you for your time. Uh, you prom- I, I asked you for value. You come up with value, so I can't, we can't do any more than that. <laughs> thank you very much, Dustin. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me on, and uh, I just want folks to get out there, get off the sidelines, and get into action because uh, you'll have what you want when you do that. Boom! You heard it. Thanks very much, Dustin. That was Dustin Matthews there. I said to Dustin at the end of that conversation, that was the most notes I've taken in a podcast. So I'm 100% sure that there's takeaways for you there from that episode. I'd love if you get in touch, if you've implemented any of those points that you took away. As always, you can reach me, host at industryangel.com. I do see every email. So thanks for getting in touch. And of course, for subscribing and reviewing the show. You've done that, right? Yeah, of course you have. So, until next time, I'm Ian Farah, this is The Industry Angel, and thanks for listening. <laughs>